All right, we got ourselves another defunct land video. The Awful Wiggles Dark Ride. Let's check it out. In 1957, a 24-year-old Australian man named John Longhurst visited the newly opened Disneyland Park in Anaheim, California. A regular viewer of the Disneyland television show, Longhurst was interested not just with the park, but the man who made it. The trip to Disneyland did not disappoint. Longhurst recalled, quote, it was something different to anything I'd ever seen. There was something romantic about it. This trip began what would become a lifelong obsession with both Disneyland and Walt Disney. Longhurst studied Walt Disney's life and philosophy. He learned the story of Walt's inspiration for Disneyland, in which Walt describes sitting on a bench at Griffith Park, watching his daughters on a carousel. I felt that there should be something built where that the parents and the children could uh, have fun together. A few years after he returned to Australia from his first Disneyland trip, Longhurst took his own children to a local animal park. At one point during their visit, Longhurst's children became interested in a monkey exhibit. Shortly after arriving to see the monkeys, the animals began to urinate. And okay. the stench was so potent that one of the kids became ill. In an attempt to turn the day around, Longhurst took the children to get a milkshake, only to be served by a woman who was constantly scratching herself while making the drink. Ugh. Longhurst quickly left with his children, and as he drove away, he had his own Walt Disney moment. He said to himself, quote, Somebody's got to do something about this. <laughs> oh, yeah. After selling a profitable lawnmower business, Longhurst began to more seriously consider the prospect of building his own theme park. He set out to find a suitable site for the project, but after repeated failed attempts, Longhurst, in his own recollection of the events, spoke with God, asking, quote, Lord, where am I going to get this site <laughs> to build my park? Okay. According to Longhurst, God responded, quote, 10 miles out on the Gold Coast. The area was perfect. Not only was it already a popular holiday destination, <laughs> Thanks, but there God. was land available. However, Longhurst was very selective about the land he needed for his park, requiring that the property have certain features for ideas he had. In 1974, Longhurst purchased 85 hectares, or 210 acres of land, 10 miles from the Gold Coast, per God's suggestion. Design and construction God's would take multiple yeah. years with Longhurst spending over two years operating a bulldozer by himself to construct the park's layout. Seven years and around $13 million later, the project 13 was million? God damn, December 15, he was rich. 1981, Longhurst Dream Park, lawnmower titled business, huh? Dream World, opened to the public. When guests entered the park, they were introduced to a world of wonder unlike they had ever seen. Oh gosh, just like a plethora of everything, huh? You got Santa Claus, guests the Easter Bunny. The they were introduced to a world of wonder. <laughs> Santa Claus, is that the Easter Bunny over there? What the hell are these things? Like, uh, you got like a koala. I don't know what this thing seen. is. Assuming a Snoopy. Assuming not been to Disneyland. Dream World's entrance was marked by a building that appeared to be a large train station. Beyond this was a quaint main street with buildings that resembled a turn-of-the-century American town. Guests could also find an area resembling an old west town with a grand river around which a paddle wheeler would travel. The park was described as Australia's answer to Disneyland, but it might be more fair to say that it was Australia's knockoff of Disneyland. Right. This is exactly what Longhurst had hoped for, and even accounting for the similarities, the results were impressive. Dreamworld did have a few unique I mean, it looks, yeah, it looks legit. Attractions, namely a state-of-the-art IMAX theater that dazzled guests, and even the elements that were directly lifted from Disneyland were given a unique Australian identity. What the hell? Rather than Mickey and Minnie Mouse, Dreamworld had Kenny uh. Koala and Belinda Brown. Rather than the Steamboat's River simply being the Rivers of America, Dreamworld's River was named the Mississippi River, a hybrid of North America's Mississippi, Mississippi? River and Australia's Murray River. The uh. river was flanked by Old West buildings on one side and Australian buildings on the other. This hybrid of Disneyland entertainment with Australian touches was a practice that would continue. And just a few months after opening, I feel like modern Disney would sue the shit out of him. Dreamworld had another Disney attraction with an Australian twist. In 1982, a new area named Gumtree Gully debuted <laughs> on the banks of the Mississippi River. The area was home to Gumtree Gully Hall, where Dreamworld guests could find the Koala Country Jamboree. This was a direct ripoff of Disney's Country Bear Jamboree, but with koalas. This elaborate animatronic show saw many scenes of koalas singing both classic Australian and American songs. Just like the Country Bear Jamboree, the show had a host and multiple musical acts. Despite the koala focus of the attraction, many other animal musicians were featured. 
There was a number where a rabbit sings itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini. Okay. There was a number where an American bear shows up and sings a Confederate Army folk song. Okay. And there is even a number where a kangaroo <laughs> sings an Australian lullaby, and in her pouch is a baby kangaroo who comes out and sings with her. That's cute. The show also featured a beast known as the Bunyip. The Bunyip is an aquatic monster that originates from Aboriginal mythology. In the Koala Country Jamboree, though, the Bunyip sings a love song. That doesn't even look like it. Cowboy hat. Dude, I, 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 dude, if they actually designed this and put it in the animatronic show, oh my god, that would have been, that would have been sick, dude. This fucking elder god looking, you know, void creature. Nate's from Aboriginal. Said it. Said they just built like some, I don't know, buck tooth bear. Apology. In the Koala Country Jamboree, though, the Bunyip sings a love song and wears a big cowboy hat. All of the acts come back in the end to sing Peter Allen's I Still Call Australia Home before the big finale, Tie Me Kangaroo Down Sport, which is the most Australian song of all time. The Koala Country all together now. was well received by guests and would become a favorite among Dreamworld fans. As time went on, Dreamworld continued to grow and expand, receiving many standard <laughs> off-the-shelf amusement rides and some signature attractions. By the late 1980s, Dreamworld was Australia's number one tourist attraction. Despite Longhurst originally right, stating seems like that a he success. would like to own the park for the rest of his life, after consideration, he decided to sell the park to entrepreneur Bruce Jenkins and his company, Dream Co. After how long? Longhurst believed Jenkins would continue developing his dream and provide the park with necessary cash flow. Unfortunately, this was not the case. After purchasing Dreamworld in 1989, Jenkins and Dream Co. were immediately in a dire state, and the park was taken over by financial firm Ernst & Young. The new management was more successful, increasing visits by 51% to a total of 1.8 million visitors per year. The park would change hands twice more before the turn of the century. By the early 2000s, Dreamworld was still struggling with finances. I just had to make sure I was watching the right video because, <laughs> like, I'm waiting for the Wiggles ride. The new attractions gave this, hope set in the, the ground, future. I guess. A variety of wildlife exhibits had been added, and in 2002, a partnership with Nickelodeon allowed the park's Kitty Land, oh, here Kenny we go. Land, to transition to Nickelodeon Central. In 2004, oh, another Australian theme park, Wonderland Sydney, closed for good and Dreamworld took the crown for the largest theme park in Australia. The success of Nickelodeon Central led Dreamworld to seek out more partnerships with recognizable properties. And in 2005, oh, we they were able to secure perhaps their most lucrative agreement yet. And just as Longhurst had done three decades prior, Dreamworld set out to make a Disney caliber attraction with a distinct Australian twist. Lucky for them, there was already an Australian the entertainment property that was taking the world by storm. Wait, they were the Australian? Are a children's music group that was founded in 1991. The group was started by Anthony Field, a member of the Australian pop band The Cockroaches. At the time, Field was studying early childhood education at Macquarie University in Sydney, alongside another Cockroaches collaborator, Greg Page, and a guitarist, Murray Cook. Together, the three combined their musical talent with their interest in early childhood development, intending to create an album of songs that could act as an educational tool. After recruiting another Cockroaches band member, keyboardist Jeff Fatt, the group formed The Wiggles. Over two years, the group <laughs> wrote and recorded their first album, repurposing many Cockroaches songs into more child-friendly Wiggles numbers. It's Wiggle time! The band evolved slowly over the next few years, adding supporting Dude, Wiggles are big, man. Captain Kids Feathers loved Wiggles. Henry the Wiggles. The Octopus, Wags the Dog, and Dorothy the Dinosaur. The group oh, Dorothy, I remember wearing Dorothy. their iconic outfits, brightly colored skivvies. The Wiggles worked diligently, releasing more albums, performing live, and producing music videos and tapes. In 1994, the band released the album Yummy Yummy, featuring two massive hits for the group, Hot Potato, hot potato, hot potato. and Fruit Salad. Fruit Salad, yummy, yummy. In 1995, <laughs> they released the album Big Red Car, along with the accompanying video, Big Red Car. This was a notable moment in Wiggles lore, as it introduced the, the Wiggles lore. iconic vehicle, the titular Big Red Car. At oh. first, the car was represented with a crude cardboard cutout, and the song featured on the album about the Big Red Car would not be the vehicle's more iconic number. In, a big red car. Red car. in 1997, the Wiggles' first and only theatrical film, the Wiggles movie was released in theaters. Mm. This film featured the first three-dimensional iteration of the Big Red Car, which was built from a dune buggy. 
The following year, in 1998, the Wiggles released their ninth toot, studio toot. album, Toot Toot, which featured the hit track, Toot Toot Chugga Chugga Big Red Car. Toot Toot Chugga Chugga Big Red Car. We'll travel near and we'll travel far. This would be the car's iconic song, and it would take over the world. Around this oh, time, really? the Wiggles began to expand into international markets and found major success in the United States, initially touring with Barney Live before embarking on a tour of their own. This is when Wiggle Mania was at its peak. By 2005, damn, the Wiggles dude. had released 21 on top of the world. albums, filmed three television series, and toured all over the world. That's crazy. <laughs> the group was struggling to meet the demand, and the number of performances were taking a toll on the health of the group, oh, namely Anthony Field and yeah. Greg Page. This level of wiggling was simply not sustainable, but Wiggle Mania was showing no signs of stopping. The Wiggles made 45 million Australian dollars Shoo. in 2004, or nearly 34 million US dollars. This made them the highest paid Australian entertainers, beating out Nicole Kidman and Russell Crowe. The Wiggles <laughs> empire was well. an intoxicating gravy train, the kind that only comes from singing about potatoes and dancing with a giant octopus, and it was a machine that could not be stopped. In an effort to maintain their health and stay closer to home, the Wiggles considered cutting down on their live performances. To supplement the lack of live shows, the group began to explore other ventures. The first was a chain of Wiggly Play Centers in Sydney. These entertainment centers were similar to those operated by Chuck E. Cheese and Discovery Zone. The Wiggly Play Centers featured indoor playgrounds, bouncy houses, and event spaces to host birthday parties. The Wiggly Play Centers allowed Wiggles fans to interact with the group without the Wiggles themselves needing to be present. Shortly after opening, a similar concept was announced, but this venture would be far more ambitious than a play center. Mm. Here we go. In May of 2005, the Wiggles announced that they had entered an agreement with DreamWorld Theme Park. DreamWorld CEO Greg Shaw told the press, quote, we will be talking to them about how we can develop that opportunity. These discussions must have occurred fast because just two months later, it was announced that a new Wiggles themed area was coming to DreamWorld. The expansion would cost 7 million Australian dollars or around 5.2 million US dollars. Okay. The new land would include shops, an activity center, a playground, an animal nursery, and a brand new ride. The first new dark ride to be built in Australia a in dark nearly two ride. decades. The new land would take the place of Gumtree Gully. By this point, the space was far past its prime. Gumtree Gully Hall and the Koala Country Jamboree had already been closed for three years. Any hope for the return of the show was dashed with the announcement of the new Wiggles Land, whose flagship dark ride would take the space formerly occupied by the singing koalas. The new dark ride would not be unique just for its wiggly theme, but also for its advanced technology. The planned attraction would be a trackless dark ride, a style of ride that was still being introduced to many theme parks in the mid-2000s. Since their inception, dark rides have sent guests along a rigid and often visible track. This track was limiting to both the attraction's range of movement and its immersive theming. Throughout the late 20th century, ride designers experimented with ways to overcome these obstacles. Disney's Omnimover system allowed ride cars to pivot and for the most part, hid the ride path from view. But this system was still on a track. It would not be until October 1st, 1982, that the first trackless ride system would be introduced with Epcot Center's Universe of Energy. Large theater seats full of guests passed throughout the attraction in unison with each other, in a slow-moving dance, with no track perceivable to guests. However, this was not a true trackless ride system either, as a 1 8 inch guide wire was embedded into the attraction's floor, laying out the ride's path. The guide wire would transmit a radio signal to each vehicle, the strength of which would communicate the vehicle's position in relation to the track. This ride system was a technological marvel in 1982. Each vehicle needed its own 82, computer, yeah, wow. which would then communicate with the attraction's master computer. The vehicles would also need to have their own propulsion systems and, most challenging, their own power and charging systems. The Imagineer solution to the latter was to embed charging plates into the floor, which used a state-of-the-art inductive power coupling. Is the Wiggles one, like, is it like a budget? Is it so super budget? Because this is like very, yeah, this is very technologically advanced for the time. ...system to charge the ride cars at two at points Disney. throughout their journey. While Universe of Energy was not technically a trackless dark ride by modern standards, it did introduce multiple innovations necessary for later systems to succeed. The guide wire system would be reused in 1989 for the Great Movie Ride, and again in 1994 for the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, with the system improving with each iteration. These attractions were all well received, obscuring the ride path and creating a more surprising experience for guests. 
While these systems delivered the theming benefits of a trackless ride system, the true potential of free range of motion had yet to be achieved. This was until the year 2000, when Tokyo Disneyland received a new dark ride named Pooh's Honey Hunt. Pooh's Honey Hunt was a breathtaking attraction, with a rumored budget of $130 million. On top of innovative effects and elaborate environments, the attraction's most impressive element was its true trackless ride system. Rather than oh, using cool. guide wires, Pooh's Honey Hunt used a local positioning system in which a sensor array communicated with the ride cars and the attraction's main computer. Oh, wow. Unlike with a guide wire, this allowed for the ride pass to be completely virtual. Disney made great cool. use of this technology, sending cars on different paths at the same time that is and pretty synchronizing cool. movements, resulting in fun choreography. Smart. This trackless ride system would be implemented and innovated in more Disney parks throughout the world. With the notable additions of motion simulation in Ratatouille the Adventure and an elevator and drop shaft in Star Wars Rise of the Resistance, other companies have developed their own trackless ride systems using local positioning leading to a trackless ride renaissance in the theme park industry that is still ongoing. However, back in 2005 when the Wiggles ride was being developed, local positioning systems for trackless rides were both new and prohibitively expensive. So while it would be widely promoted as a trackless dark ride, the attraction would rely on a guide wire system developed by a little-known company named Simtech. Simtech was a New Zealand-based entertainment company founded by set designer Frank Marquette in 1984. Marquette primarily worked on films such as The Lord of the Rings and small entertainment projects such as mini golf courses. Okay. In 2001, the company formed a team to develop an automated wire-guided vehicle system, or AGV, for themed entertainment rides, as Marquette believed that this ride type was the future of the industry. By 2003, the company had developed their system, reportedly piquing the interest of both Disney Parks and Universal Studios. To prove their ability to develop a full-scale theme park attraction, Simtech built a proof-of-concept standalone ride named the Emperor's Tomb. This shooting dark ride was built near the company's headquarters in Christchurch, New Zealand. The ride used the new AGV system and also showcased Simtech's ability to produce animatronics and detailed show scenes. It would not be long after debuting this proof-of-concept that DreamWorld would contract Simtech to design and construct the Wiggles dark ride. Simtech would provide the ride system, animatronics, and show scenes. Arvis, a sound technology company, was also contracted to provide a unique audio system to each ride car. This included a microphone, a push button, and a speaker system. According to Arvis, this was, quote, the world's first onboard karaoke system for an amusement ride vehicle, and that, quote, special microphones had to be developed so that there was no feedback from the speakers directly next to them. Gumtree Gully was transformed quickly, with the new Wiggles area ready to open after just four months of construction. The new land, named Wiggles World, had its opening ceremonies on September 13, 2005, with the Wiggles themselves appearing and taking a ride on the land's signature dark ride, the Big Red Car Ride. The ride and the land would officially open four days later, and on September 17, 2005, the children of Australia were welcomed inside a brand new Wiggly World. All right, happy ending, bada bing the... Guests entered Wiggles World under a whimsical arch featuring illustrations of all four Wiggles, Dorothy the Dinosaur, Henry the Octopus, Wags the Dog, and Captain Feathersword. Inside, families could visit the Fun Spot Activity Center for Wiggles-themed games, or visit the banks of the Mississippi River. Looks very colorful Feather Sword playground. and fun. Throughout the land, Interactive. guests could meet Henry the Octopus, Wags the Dog, Dorothy the Dinosaur, and even Captain Feathersword himself. The Gumtree Gully Farmyard Petting Zoo was rethemed to the Wiggles Farmyard Friends. The land also had a gift shop, marketed as the first Wiggles merchandise store, as well as a cafe with healthy foods, yum, yummy. appropriately named Yummy Yummy. It oh, was yummy, even yummy. a recreation of the exterior of the Wiggle House, which allowed guests to get up close and personal with Flora Door, the Wiggle House's Flora sentient door. door. <laughs> the Wiggles World's main like, attraction was something you don't know. the big red car. The exterior featured a prominent marquee beckoning guests into their Wiggles adventure. Guests entered the ride short queue, with the boarding area just a few feet ahead. A television mounted to the wall displayed Wiggles videos as guests waited in line. Guests watched as their own big red car pulled into the loading station. The ride vehicle was perfectly themed, appearing identical to the Wiggles iconic car, with the notable additions of room for three riders per row and the unique karaoke system. Guests waited patiently for the ride car to reach the loading area which depending on how many cars were operating on the track, could take a while. The ride had an advertised top speed of two kilometers per hour, 
or about 1.25 miles that per hour. That is slow. <laughs> this is slow. For comparison, the Formula Rasa roller coaster at Ferrari World Abu Dhabi tops out at a speed of 240 kilometers per hour. Is that the fast? Is this like the fastest roller coaster or something? Or 149 miles per Holy hour. Holy shit, that's as fast. That's over 100 times faster than the big red <laughs> car ride. Even uh, compared that is to other dark slow, rides, the big red dude. car ride was slow. For instance, I, mean, I know like kid rides are usually, you know, not it's supposed to be not as intense as other rides, but holy shit, one mile an hour. The Haunted Mansion and similar Omnimovers move twice as fast, and newer trackless dark rides are even faster. Speed was not an advertised element of the big red car ride, and but they're it would definitely off. play a role in the energy and pacing of the attraction. Oh my god. Once the car arrived to the loading station, guests board the big red car ride and buckle up. The doors to the first show scene open, and it is officially time to wiggle. As the Wiggles begin singing Toot Toot Chugga Chugga Big Red Car, the ride vehicles slowly move into the Wiggles' garden. Lights illuminate the space as the car turns to face a small TV mounted to the wall. The Wiggles appear on the screen, welcoming guests to the ride and suggesting that they use their microphones to sing along. They then inform riders that they will be entering the Wiggle House next. Why don't we go into the house? Sing some songs together. Toot toot chugga chugga big red car begins to play again as the vehicles slowly move into the Wiggles kitchen. The car turns to face another TV screen, this time featuring <laughs> just Anthony, who instructs <sighs> riders to sing Hot Potato. As the song begins, <laughs> uh, that kid, he that just kid's face. Anthony, who instructs riders to sing Hot Potato. <laughs> oh my god. It doesn't really look like he's having that much fun. As the song, <laughs> uh, it's like his his mom or his dad or something was like sing it to the mic. Let, let me get a video of it. Song begins. The cabinets, refrigerator, and oven open and close to the music. Potato, potato, potato. Next up is the Wiggles lounge room. Toot toot chugga chugga big red car plays again as the cars slowly move into the scene. Is that the only song on the they wall, play on this ride? The doors to all of the Wiggles bedrooms can be seen an iconic set to those familiar with Wiggles lore. After entering this room, the car turns to face a third TV screen. In this video, Jeff is sleeping and the Wiggles are attempting to wake him up. They ask that you use your microphone to shout, wake up Jeff. One, two, three. Wake up, Jeff. Thanks for waking me up, everyone. <laughs> this wakes Jeff up and the Wiggles then sing, wake up Jeff. The vehicles again play Toot Toot Chugga Chugga Big Red Car as they move into the next room, Wags Kennel. The cars then turn to face a fourth TV screen. In this video, Greg explains that if we all sing Wave to Wags, Wags the dog might slide down his slide. After singing the song, Wags slides down. Very slow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what an entrance. The next scene oh is by far God, the most dude. elaborate. Now underwater, guests encounter Henry the Octopus and a variety of sea creatures, including a fish plane. Dude, compared to like the Winnie the Pooh ride, this is so bad. I, oh, God. It's like, it, it just, it, it looks like something you'd see at like a state fair or something. And a saxophone and a crab playing a guitar. The room is filled with detailed scene work, immersive lighting, and a fifth TV screen, on which Murray suggests Another writers TV move screen. their arms like Henry and sing, move your arms like Henry. In response, Henry rocks from side to side, wow. not technically moving his arms at all. Yeah, wow, look at that. fish does move back and forth, which is great. The final scene is in Dorothy's garden. Dorothy is seen rocking back and forth on her swing as the car enters the room. Dorothy greets guests, and as the car begins to exit, riders encounter their sixth and final television screen. The Wiggles express how fun the ride has been and remind guests to wave to the camera. After snapping a photo, <laughs> guests return to the loading area very slowly. God damn, dude. The Big oh, Red Car no. Ride at Dreamworld oh, no, initially no, no. received fairly positive reviews. For Wiggles fans, especially small children. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure, like kids probably enjoyed it a lot, right? I mean, kids are easily, you know, entertained. It allowed them the Bright colors to drive in the big red car and visit iconic Wiggles locations. The karaoke microphones added a unique interactive element. That part, and more elaborate yeah, it's show unique. Scenes toward the end of the ride, were particularly well received. In many ways, the dark ride was impressive, especially for a small park like Dreamworld. 
However, there were many aspects of the ride that were less than great. The attraction relied heavily on its television screens, some of which were sloppily mounted with visible wires. The walls of each room <laughs> did not extend to the show building ceiling, which detracted from no. the and a bit dark and Oh unsettling. no, really? You can just see all this up here. Oh god, that's come on. Really? Another odd and Ugh. often frightening aspect of the attraction oh, was the lighting the design light? and timing. Oh, there seemed to be a lack of consistent show scene lighting. As each ride through from the first few years of operation, Where's the immersion, man? Have different lighting patterns. For instance, when the big red car exits the first room and enters the Wiggles kitchen, sometimes the lights are already on, sometimes the lights are off and turn on immediately, and sometimes the lights stay off in the kitchen until just before the video plays. This results in long stretches of guests entering a dark room oh, with only God. the light of the other show scenes illuminating the space. Ugh. The reverse of this problem is also eerie. There are times when the kitchen lights are on, but the lounge room lights are not. So guests can see a very darkly lit lounge room ahead of them as they ride through the kitchen. <laughs> that, that is kind of creepy. <laughs> oh, this man. is even more off-putting in the more elaborate show scenes at the end. Oh, For God. example, sometimes guests will make it all the way into Dorothy's garden before the lights turn on. The other negatives Surprise. of the big red car ride are not a fault of the Dreamworld attraction specifically, but are issues found in many travel. Hey, Dad, rides. chill out! Whoa. Both wire guided and local positioning. He's, he's having a little too much fun on the Wiggles ride. Scene layouts that traditional dark rides do not, because there is a possibility that a trackless dark ride car will divert from its intended path in a way that a track to dark ride cannot. The show elements need to be placed further away from the planned route to account for this extra margin of error. This can make rooms feel empty and show scenes seem distant. Another downside of trackless dark rides is that the designers are encouraged to illuminate the floor, either to create more natural lighting for an environment or to showcase the lack of track to riders so the unpredictability is more thrilling. Mm -hmm. The negative to this lighting technique is that it draws more attention to the extra floor space, making some show scenes feel like big empty rooms. One thing that the big red car ride did better than many trackless dark rides was its unique floor designs. Many show scenes featured fun floor patterns to account for the excessive space. One of the most glaring downsides to trackless dark ride floors was not present when the ride opened. But as with many trackless rides, it would not be long before the issue presented itself. Overall, the ride that SimTech delivered was impressive given the budget and time restraints. The big red car ride, as it opened, was not awful, but changes were coming sooner than anyone could have anticipated. Wait, changes? Really? Okay. In September of 2006, a year after the land's opening, the Wiggles returned to their home at Dreamworld for a special concert celebrating the group's 15th birthday. The group also dedicated a new Wiggles World attraction, Dorothy's Rosy Teacup Ride. Fans flocked to Dreamworld to see the Wiggles return, but many longtime fans noticed that something was different. Greg Page, the Yellow Wiggle, was nowhere to be found. Instead, his understudy, Sam Moran, was performing his as understudy. the Yellow Wiggle. Moran had been subbing for Page for years, but Page's absences had become more frequent, with compounding health issues cited as the reason. Just one month after the Wiggles' visit to Dreamworld, it was announced that Moran would be replacing Page for the rest of the Wiggles' 2006 tour, due to bouts of fainting that Page had been experiencing. Page's okay. illness had still yet to be diagnosed, That's fair. but he expressed his determination to join the Wiggles on future tours. However, just one month later, in November of 2006, Page released a video message to fans to deliver some shocking news. He's re retiring. For some time now, I've been suffering from a condition called orthostatic intolerance, which basically means that when I stand up, my heart doesn't pump enough blood around my body. Oh, no. It means that I'll no longer be able to That's sing bad. and dance the way that I want to. That's sad. And as a result, I've decided to stop performing with the Wiggles. Moran replaced Page as the Yellow Wiggle completely. In songs, on tour, in videos, and in no time at all, in Dreamworld. In 2007, Moran replaced Page throughout the park, including on the land's entrance arch and the big red car ride's marquee. The Wiggles also shot okay. new footage for the big red car ride. doesn't really seem like that big of a deal. I mean, ride with Moran. These changes meant something that, that ha has to happen red eventually, car right? Ride operated for less than two years before receiving this significant change. While the new footage used the same script as the original, even the slight adjustment in timing and delivery began to alter the original design intentions of the attraction. On top of this, effects were consistently breaking down, and oh, made it seem I see, to struggle I see to how keep that, the how ride that affects experience it. consistent. 
The door that opens in the first show scene, separating the loading area from the rest of the ride, did not work reliably, and other times it flew open abruptly. As aforementioned, Jesus. the lighting was inconsistent, but at certain times, they were more obviously malfunctioning. In just a few years after opening, the Big Red Car Ride was experiencing the same issue that even the most expensive trackless dark rides struggle with. Visible tire marks throughout oh, the attraction. True. It was impressive that Dreamworld received a trackless dark think about ride that. with multiple show scenes and animatronics. But maintaining show quality was a huge challenge. And only a few years into the attraction's lifespan, the ride experience was already suffering. In December of 2006, Dreamworld opened a neighboring water park, White Water World, that featured an area dedicated to the Wiggles, Wiggle Bay, featuring four slides White representing Waterworld? each Wiggle. In 2007, Wiggles World came to the United States thanks to a partnership with Six Flags. We can't help but love you all when you make us so wiggly giggly. Six Flags Great America, Six Flags Great Adventure, and Six Flags New England received Wiggles Worlds of their own, with many identical features to Dream Worlds, with similar furnishings and signage. One feature that was not identical, though, was the appearance of Floridor. What is she looking at? Why is she looking at me like that? <laughs> I don't think she's looking at you like that. I think she's seen something that she probably shouldn't be seeing. Gabe and Six Flags Fiesta. At first, it was she knew something that you didn't know. Now she's seeing something that I don't know if she's gonna. Oh, maybe this is like the maybe this is like the preview. You know, this is what happened first. She saw something. She saw you doing something, and then, and then she's looking at you like I know your secret. Why is she looking at me like that? The Great Escape and Six Flags Fiesta Texas would also receive Wiggles Worlds in 2008 and 2009, respectively. Some of these lands had their own big red car rides, but these were outdoor driving tracks not dark rides. As with Dream World, the Wiggles made appearances at the Six Flags Wiggles Worlds. However, while guests could meet Dorothy the Dinosaur, Henry the Octopus, Wags the Dog, and even Captain Feathersword, no actors ever filled in for the Wiggles at the park, likely because if they did, children would be able to tell that they were not the real Wiggles. This went against the expectations of theme park guests, who were used to seeing and interacting with beloved characters. Most of the time, though, guests could not meet the Wiggles at Wiggles World, and without allowing local actors to portray the band, the only way to allow guests to interact with the Wiggles without the Wiggles themselves present would be to create mascot costumes of the four that park employees could wear. This really only works with animals That's and That's kind of weird, characters. yeah. A theme park would never create mascot costumes to represent four human men. <laughs> Oh God. The Six Flags Wiggles World <laughs> would only last until 2010, when Six Flags ended its licensing agreements with multiple intellectual properties, including the Wiggles. The Six Flags lands were all rethemed for the 2011 season. Kidsopolis. This left only one Wiggles World, the original in Dream World, and more changes were coming to both the lands and the Wiggles themselves. In January 2012, the Wiggles announced that Greg Page would be returning to don the yellow skivvy once more replacing his replacement, Sam Moran. This made headlines around the world. It had been five years since Paige had performed with the group, and for many children, Moran was the Yellow Wiggle. Rumors circulated about the switch, speculating that Paige's bad investments and financial troubles since leaving the group had necessitated his return, a claim that Paige denied. Many speculated of bad blood between Moran and the rest of the group, which was all but confirmed over the course of the next couple of years. Oh, really? The band's manager, Paul Field, defended the decision, saying, quote, If the Stones lost Mick Jagger due to illness and he came back a few years later, <laughs> there wouldn't be a question. That's quite a comparison. Page's return sparked controversy for the otherwise wholesome musical group, with parents especially not happy with the sudden change. The Wiggles assured fans that they would pay Moran royalties on all of the songs that he had written for the group, and the band had offered him full access to the Wiggles' Hot Potato Studios. Moran would go on to have a successful solo career, creating his own show on Nick Jr. named Play Along With Sam. Shortly after the switch, the Wiggles again reshot footage for the big red car ride with Paige, which either means they lost the original files with him, or the band <laughs> was so obsessed with the dark ride's continuity that the difference in their age would have kept them up at night. They also updated the signage around Wiggles World a third time with Old Greg, which was illustrated slightly different than Young Greg was years prior. The drama over Paige's return to the band was short-lived and practically all for naught, as in May of 2012, just a few months after the switch, the Wiggles announced that Jeff, Murray, and Greg would be leaving the band. 
This was in large part due to exhaustion and various health issues that yeah, the they're looking were experiencing. Old. As apparently nothing well, not makes old, one face older, their own I mean, mortality sorry. more than being a wiggle. Anthony would be the only wiggle to remain in the band. The and OG. Three backup performers would be handed the iconic skivvies. Lachlan Gillespie, Simon Price, and the first female wiggle, Emma Watkins. Later in 2012, Dreamworld added another Wiggles kitty ride, the, big red, the boat. big red Boat Ride, with the Wiggles once again present to dedicate the attraction. The new group's first performance together was at Dreamworld in 2013. That same year, the signage was again updated and the Big Red Car Ride went under a fourth refurbishment, the most significant in its history. Not only was a fourth round of video shot to account for the new members, but the first room was changed entirely to Emma's room, with music equipment and wallpaper featuring her soon-to-be iconic yellow bow. These changes only worsened the ride's pacing, and technical issues continue to plague the experience. God, still? The, the first room Holy was left shit, permanently man. open, leaving no barrier between the loading area and the rest of the ride. The cabinets <laughs> oh, in the kitchen God, scene so continued to janky. open and close long after the segment ended, and the ride cars were consistently fine, too early or too late in arriving to the next show scene. Audio tracks consistently clashed, with Toot Toot Chugga Chugga Big Red Car sometimes playing at the same time as the video, <laughs> causing pure audio chaos. Oh god. The lighting issues were as bad as ever, and somehow, almost impressively, the cars moved even slower throughout the ride, <laughs> and every year the ride continued oh, to operate, no, the man. experience only worsened. In less than a decade, is it still the Big Red in Car operation? Ride had devolved into a truly awful ride experience. In 2015, Dreamworld announced that Wiggles World would be no more, uh, okay. but the Wiggles would not be going anywhere. <clears throat> the land would be rethemed to ABC Kids World to incorporate more properties from the Australian broadcasting company's popular children's franchises, including Play School, Giggle and Hoot, and those bananas that wear pajamas. Dorothy bananas in pajamas. Ride, the Big Red Boat Ride and the Big Red Car Ride would remain and retain their Wiggles theming. The SS Feather Sword would be rethemed to the Giggle and Hoot Pirate Ship, and the Fun Spot Activity Center would be rethemed to the ABC Kids World Fun Spot. Two new attractions, the Play School Art Room and the Bananas in Pajamas Fun Maze, would be added to the area as well. The iconic Wiggles Arch remained in the new land and was relocated closer to the Wiggle House. ABC Kids World added more relevance to the area, but the excitement surrounding the additions would be short-lived. On October 25, 2016, tragedy struck Dreamworld when the park's Thunder River Rapids ride malfunctioned, leading to a major accident between two rafts, resulting in the death of four riders. Holy the shit, dude. became worldwide news, and an investigation was launched into the cause of the accident. In the following years, poor maintenance would be cited as a cause of the incident. Wow. And Dreamworld would pay out millions in fines and compensation That's to the sad. victims' families. I did not know Three about that. I, I didn't hear about that. In 2019, Dreamworld announced a $70 million expansion project, including the addition of a new triple launch coaster to replace the Thunder River Rapids Oh, ride. God, dude. Going on this ride after, like, finding out someone died on in the park... Like a year earlier? Jesus, this one looks even worse. As or part of the transformation, even more ABC intense. Kids World would also receive a multi-million dollar refurbishment. However, in March of 2020, DreamWorld closed or due corona. to the COVID-19 pandemic, putting the expansion project on hold. In August of 2020, it was announced that the park would reopen in September. Before the park's reopening on September 16th, it was revealed that two DreamWorld rides would not reopen with the park. These were Flow Rider in the Ocean Parade section, in the big red car ride no. in ABC Kids World. The attraction received no big send-off, no final rides, not even a true goodbye. Which is a shame because the Wiggles have four different songs about saying goodbye. One of the ride cars was placed outside of the attraction for photos, and the loading area uh. was boarded up. The pandemic delayed DreamWorld's expansion plans significantly. ABC Kids World continued to operate throughout 2020, 2021, and 2022, with the big red car ride sitting in the dark closed off to guests. Dreamworld eventually announced a new renovation schedule. A children's area named Kenny and Belinda's Dreamland would open in 2023. The Kitty Land will replace Dreamworld's Madagascar. DreamWorks area and will feature many ABC Kids properties, including the Wiggles. The Wiggles will receive two new attractions, a big red plane spinner and a big red boat coaster, but no plans for a new big red car ride have been made. Once Kenny and Belinda's Dreamland fully opens, Dreamworld will finally close ABC Kids World to make room for a new area called Rivertown. 
Rivertown will be an homage to the original Rivertown area that Longhurst built for Dreamworld all the way back in 1981. Oh, that's nice. And the land will feature a new family coaster, Jungle Rush. While the Wiggles will live on at Dreamworld, the sudden closure of the Big Red Car Ride was disappointing to Dreamworld and Wiggles fans that would have preferred to give the attraction a proper send-off. The ride was not the most impressive, and its deterioration over the years <laughs> yeah, had no. left it in an abysmal state. Still, it had allowed children to take a trip in the Wiggles' big red car, sing along to classic Wiggles songs, and visit iconic. Yeah, Wiggles I'm sure. It, it, I'm sure it made a lot of kids happy, which you know, at the end of the day, is is what the Wiggles wanted, right? Even if it did all of those things, very slowly. Yeah. The Wiggles have continued to evolve over the past few years, and the current band continues to spend time at Dreamworld. While the group is still popular, their presence in the park and the band itself might never again reach the prevalence they experienced at the time Wiggles World opened. For those lucky enough to experience the Wiggles home on the Gold Coast in its heyday, there was never a better time to wiggle. Ah, That's cute. Oh, I enjoyed that video a lot. Their commitment to keeping the ride lore accurate even because the rest of their shit air is so funny but also kind of admirable. Yeah. Your business using two two chugga chugga baby car cutting off earlier every time is comedy genius. Yeah, that was a good video. I enjoyed that a lot.